Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another episode. This week we're debuting the Nuka-Cola Girl. This is a brand new sculpt that we're actually releasing ourselves. This was sculpted by one of our artists um, that we freelance to quite often. And this is a wonderful work inspired by the works of Fallout. Uh, the Nuka-Cola ray gun there in her hand. Uh, see the classic Nuka-Cola suit, space suit there that she's wearing. Iconic little jetpack, etc. So, very cool character. We're going to talk about hollowing parts that you should, parts that you shouldn't. We're going to get rid of those arms because those those are too small. We're not going to hollow those. The legs and body parts would definitely be hollowed. So, you want to head over to your prepare tab and then you want to click on your hollowing 3D. Choose your specified thickness. In this case, I'm going to go with 1.5 millimeters and always quality 4 gives you the best interior depth for what you're working with. Then once that is done, building its hollowing parts on the inside, we can then move on to uh, explain how the uh, drain holes and best place to place those according to orientation, etc. And trust me, that is important because you want to make sure you put the drain holes where the print is going to start uh, in order to make sure that you don't have suction cupping early on, which can actually affect the way the print is going to print. Uh, it can affect warping, pancaking, support styles, etc. So if you're hoping to go really light on your supports, but you've got a huge suction cup at the bottom of your print, that's not going to work out for you too well. So definitely something to keep in mind, and that's why the drain hole thing is really important to make sure that you make them large enough, that you have enough of them and that they are adequate to suit the, the actual part that you're printing. And we'll go over that in just a sec. So once your parts are hollowed, you're going to notice in the object inspector on the left there, and you can click on objects over the top in your lychee uh, menu there, you'll see that the hollowed parts actually have that little um, object there on the, what is it, the uh, column there just over to the left you'll see that that's hollowed out now essentially what that means is the object is hollow and so you can see the inside of it by using the exterior interior button on your prepare tab now i don't use that too much because honestly what i'll do with these parts is i will hollow them and then i will put holes in them and then i will export them out of lychee in order to have a static hole placed in the object rather than relying on um, Leachy's hole logic because I, I really want to make sure my holes are actually going to work uh, and that's one of the problems I ran into so as we're doing this work on the leg I'm going to explain here so I'm putting some just random holes here I haven't actually specified size we're going to go back and change that in a moment and uh, you'll notice what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to place them as close to the edge as possible they're a little too penetrative so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and reduce that a little bit uh, you can actually drag and select all of them at once if you want, and then you can actually uniformly kind of change the penetration depth. So we'll change that to two, and then I'm going to change the size of them to make them a bit larger, and then we're just going to move them a little further apart. Now, um, sometimes working with holes can be a little frustrating. They don't, when you're working with Leechy's native hole system, it's not the greatest. They, they, it has, I've had issues with it where it'll show you punching a hole, doesn't give you an error, the hole doesn't turn pink or red, and um, you'll go to export the file and the hole just doesn't produce. So, again, you know, it could just be a factor of a glitch, but I've had this happen way too many times. So, the way I do it, the hollow the part, put my holes in, then I orientate the part the way that I'm going to monitor it so I can see where these holes are coming in first, um, which I'll go over with you now. So, you're going to want to look at, you know, layout. So when you go back to your layout, you're going to position the limb in however or whatever body part, body torso, uh, in the position that's going to be most conducive of your drain holes. So as you'll see here, that cavity down there at the bottom starts pretty well, but it's got a little bit of space. So we're going to put another hole. So boom. Now we have two holes that are starting at the bottom, and it's going to give an adequate amount of air, aeration, and drainage that it's going to need. It also needs an additional hole in the side of the key because that's going to actually hit the bottom before the actual tip of the key does where the hole is. And I think that that's going to be necessary to prevent 
extra suction in that part of the print. So this should actually give you a much cleaner pull off in the beginning and prevent those extra suction forces happening due to suction cups. Now you could of course just go right into your raft, lift your model up, and then start doing your supporting like you normally do. But in this case, like I said, I'm going to show you the approach I normally take, which is to export the model outside of Leachy once you have created your holes where you want them. Now, this doesn't really present any major issues as far as I've ever encountered, except for the fact that you may have to go back and do your holes differently if you decide they're not in the best place. Not a big deal. Make sure you export it as an STL and make sure you check the box that says create holes into the uh, exported 3D files. That will go ahead and remove the geometry where you've punched holes and then we can see how that's going to look a little bit later on. For now though, I'm going to move on to a slightly larger object and show you how you would go about, again, same methodology. You're going to hollow this pretty much the same way, but I'm going to explain again orientation and the different ways in, in which you should do your drain holes. All right, so the infamous Nuka Cola bottle, and yes, this is one of the bigger pieces of this particular print. This bottle itself is 180, I think 180 plus millimeters, so it's about 18 centimeters tall. Uh, it does not, doesn't stand straight up, but it is a big focal point of the piece. If you're familiar with the Nuka Cola character or the Nuka Cola girl character, um, she's been pictured, you know, holding that ray gun, but there's also numerous times where she's been pictured riding the bottle. Uh, we went with that one. So once again, you're going to go ahead and build your hollowing like you did with the other body parts. And we're going to go ahead and take a look so we can see where the lowest point is and punch our holes first. Now, I'm not going to punch a huge hole in the bottom of the bottle because honestly, I don't want to give anybody the nightmare of having to repair that. These are four millimeter uh, radius sized holes. They shouldn't be too hard to fill with some putty uh, or filling material. And then I'm going to punch one hole in the middle so that way you can see um, there's going to be a good amount of variation available in the middle of the print now we may find that we need to move these a little further down because we don't want to move them a little further to the border area of where the print is actually going to be starting versus the inside um, to make sure that we have the least amount of suction cupping possible but again this is just going to be some mild adjustment you're going to move the holes a little bit you're going to adjust them uh, you, there's two ways you can do this. You can use it in standard mode or you can do it in advanced mode. Advanced mode, obviously, you press the space bar, like the same way you do for supporting, and that's going to give you advanced mode for your um, holes. And you, with that, you can actually raise them up and down. You can increase their size. This, it's actually uh, numerous amounts of things you can do with them in advanced mode. Um, uh, the deficiency there is that they don't move natively on the plane. They move wherever you've placed them. So you can actually slide them completely off the model. <laughs> it's very strange the way that that one works versus um, the standard movement module. Um, but then you go, yeah. So you're going to place your holes at the lowest points, obviously, to, to create the least amount of suction. And then, of course, you're going to go along with your later layer slider, and you're going to just kind of scroll up and make sure that you have a decent amount of drainage there at the bottom, which we do. Now, we have this little nub that sticks out, so we're going to have to stick a hole there on the side, and then we're going to have to stick a hole further up into the key just to make some aeration and draining there. That will help that to uh, alleviate any pressure in the middle of the bottle. Um, and that pretty much takes care of the actual bottle itself and how we're going to hollow it. Now, I might wind up putting an additional hole in the bottom in the middle, but I think for this particular one, we're good on that, and we'll go ahead and export that. Um, and we'll work on this file and uh, we'll go over how to support these files once you've um, exported them back out. All right, so we have the big hollowed Nuka Cola bottle. As you can see, the holes there are quite permanent. Um, we no longer have the leachy little gray 
circular whole thing. We now actually have a fully hollowed STL file that actually has some permanent holes. Now, there's a couple good things about this. One, supports can actually go into those holes and assist on the internal supporting of an object. Um, and the other thing, and with an object this tall, it probably needs it. The other thing is, is the software is not going to mess with your holes anymore. They're there. They're, they're, they're part of the geometry. As far as light is concerned, it is just part of whatever you've imported. It's not going to try and mess with it. So again, this is why it's so important that we use quality four because your smoothing on the inside is going to be really important for the quality of the interior of the print. And one of the first things I do is I as I go through a print that's been hollowed is I will actually go through the interior and I'll start scrolling up through the layer slider and I'll start adding a little support here and there as I start to get enough of an incline to do so. Now on the inside of this bottle because it's a little tight there in that corner it's a little tough to do this and there isn't a whole lot of area in the very starting points that need some supporting. With that one row there at the very bottom I'm going to paint some supports on and that should actually work pretty well to support that bottom little lip as the bottle starts to print on the inside. Um, and of course, as you go up, please, you know, always make sure to make to keep a lookout for any yellow zones um, and anything that's going to be at an angle that will allow you to place any supports because you're going to want to place a little bit of an extra support on the inside of a model this size when you've hauled the exterior wall. It goes up at a strange angle parts of it kind of come out on shelves so I think it's important to maintain some good supporting underneath on the inside of this model to make sure that you maintain a good print not everything requires heavy or any internal supporting unless it has islands on the inside and in which case you obviously have to support those but sometimes you can actually rely on the wall of the model to actually support itself when you have enough supporting on the outside, it's, necess it's not necessarily always you know, the, the necessary to support the inside as well. And I found this with a couple of smaller parts, um, legs and stuff like that, where you can spare some of the internal supporting and just make sure you have your islands done, and for the most part, it's good. Now, for heavier parts, torsos, bottoms, um, bases, you know, hollowed out chunks like this, where you have a giant piece, terrain parts, no. Definitely don't shrug on that because you're going to need to support the areas that are going to come straight across. You're going to need to support anything that is a yellow area on the inside. And yes, you know, the, the smaller parts may have those zones too, but always remember, do your islands check, make sure you support those islands, and then you should be good as far as the um, areas on those models that you need to support. But we've, we've just found that, you know, the, the, it isn't always necessary to over support the inside of a model. You can sometimes get away with just going, islands and then done uh, and not have to worry about anything too heavy on the inside um, we will use support painter quite a lot the reason I do that is because it's actually easier to freehand some of this stuff when you can get in there and you just hover over you know get your get your get your support ready and then you just kind of click and hold drag and you get that support painter now um, the support painter feature is great because it'll just place supports where the system kind of goes, all right, I can put one here, I can put one here, I can put one here. And then you give it the interval. It'll also avoid other supports that are in its way. So it's not going to crowd the supporting too much. It's not like auto supports will crowd things. So I think it's actually a really neat way to super fast, you know, speed through your workflows because you can easily look at the model and you can say, okay, these are all yellow spots. Cool, I'm gonna paint on supports here, I'm gonna paint on supports there, and I'm gonna paint on supports here, and then bing, bang, boom, you have the supports done in those areas. And even if it's not perfect and you need to go back and some, do some adjustments, you've put the groundwork down for it. And who cares if it looks pretty? Honestly, guys, the important thing is whether your model prints well enough and how easy it is to remove these. And that is the goal here with this quality and ease of removal so always remember that it doesn't really matter if it look, doesn't look like a sculpture when you're done the supporting doesn't have to be neat and tidy but for the most part as long as it does its job I think you're doing a good job we're gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the supporting on the island areas or sorry rather not that the island areas but the overhanging areas on the bottle which will allow us to kind of move into more of the supporting structure of the entire bottle
All right, for this, we're going to cut down to our the lower layer height. We're going to go to a uh, uh, 20 micron layer height here so we can do our islands check, which I like to do. Uh, this is, of course, a neat little, I don't want to call it glitch. It's kind of a little workaround or hack that we use in Lychee to kind of do heightened island searches. We'll go ahead and lower the, uh, or raise the layer height to really, really high, you know, 20, uh, whatever, and do the island search. This will, of course, create more layers because you're creating more slices. And I think it gives it the opportunity to catch more islands this way. Uh, this has been really valuable to me, and it's a great speed hack in order to be able to work through my uh, process a little bit faster. Once you've done a majority of that support work, both on the inside and with the islanding, you can go ahead and start going back up and down with your layer slider just to make sure we haven't missed any focus areas that we need to put more attention on. For example, the nub that sticks out the bottom of the bottle, this needs a little bit more attention. Its starting point is kind of small and it doesn't have a lot of excess support underneath it. So what you're going to find there is that, you, well, you need to definitely add some more supporting. So go ahead and add some more supports underneath the areas that need focus. Of course, you're going to look for your yellow zones. That's super important because they're going to indicate areas that are at a certain angle or greater. And they're also going to indicate areas that are just a good candidate for support. Yellow means support. So I'm going to hammer that home, guys, until y'all get that. Keep in mind, folks, just because the island check was successful on a higher um, layer height count doesn't mean it's going to properly support everything when we do our islands by themselves. Always go back and check. Do your slice by slice check, guys. It's super important that we do this because we're going to find areas that just need our help. That The, the program's like, yeah, I'm just going to put one support here, here, and here. And it's going to build this entire shelf. Is that cool? No, it's not cool. But the software thinks it's cool. This is, again, why you need human interjection sometimes when it comes to either auto-supporting or, you know, stuff like it. So do keep that in mind. Now we're going to go over just doing the rest of the supports on the bottom. I'm going to support the bottom of this very similarly to a base. But instead of doing a double row, I'm just going to cluster in some of these medium lights, which are, as you can see, 0.33, 3.33 and a 1.33. So uh, we'll be using those along the bottom. And then I'm going to switch it up to some lights as well. Because this material, it's it's hollowed well enough. We're not going to, it's not going to be a lot of weight, but it's going to be tall. So the one thing I'm going to do after I'm done with this is I'm going to add some additional supports underneath that are going to help support it as it builds upwards because we don't want it to pull off of the supports on the bottom as it gets super, super tall and those additional tugs start to have stress on the bottom supports, which is why I'm using a mixture of the 0.33s and I'll be adding in some 0.22s as well, blending those together to create a nice little frame um, that should should keep this bottle printing very well. Um, now I've already printed the 20 centimeter edition, which is a bit smaller than this one. This will be a 30, I believe 31 centimeter tall edition of the figurine. So this one we're working on it has not been printed yet. I do not know. I do not actually know how big it's going to be when it's done. Um, we are actually going to cover over more stuff with the other parts of the model and I'm going to pr be producing more episodes with more of this as content because it's our model so I can use it as much as I want honestly I'm, and I'm really happy to show it off. Um, we have some initial prints from some of the alphas that we've printed 
and I will be showing those off on some shorts as I um, finish them and get them ready to show off.
Now, as you've seen for the bottle, we've used the combination of inline supporting on curves, we've used the combination of the painter, and we've worked with both individual supporting as well as, you know, using your standard and traditional methods. The interesting point here with this is that objects like this that tend to be a little bit taller, folks will usually aim in sight of, you know, using much heavier supports. I'm not using anything heavier than a 0.33, and to be honest, I don't think it's necessary. Um, the amount of supports that are going into this, the thickness of the material, and the weight of it is, is pretty much all I need to know, and factoring that in with mass and the way that's going to work against the build plate, this object isn't going to pull hard enough to require anything heavier than what I'm giving it. I'll be pretty surprised if any of it doesn't actually print off normally. Um, now keep in mind, one of the things you do want to do is just make sure that you've checked off every area and make sure that you have no naked spots. You want to make sure that the um, supports go all the way from the bottom to the top. So even if you have this at an angle the way we do, you want to make sure that you have something um, cradling the bottom of the, of the object at least most of the way up to the top. Um, if you're good there, go ahead and add your bracings. Do any final checks you need to. Um, obviously we did this island check at a much higher layer height and so in order to really make sure that we're good I usually recommend when you switch back to the layer height you're printing to run another island search to ensure that you um, you know don't have anything that's been missed the, the, again this is part of what I was talking about with this little hack sometimes you will find that the different layer heights will find different islands sometimes they don't that's the annoying part, but it's best to run them and just to make sure so that way you don't have any issues when you do finally run off your print. Um, anyway, that's it for the bottle. So that's a big object. Um, this is, like I said, this is 18.7 centimeters tall, uh, about 187 millimeters. It's large. Um, and yeah it's a it's a big object so that, it could actually technically be used as a prop if you cut off the nub on the bottom <laughs> and on the top now let's go back to that leg that we put the holes in and um i'll go over a basically a very small object but it's a limb so it's still important because a lot of times we have to print characters in multiple parts and you know legs and arms are often some of the components that we need to print now, a leg is a bit thicker than an arm, especially if the character is decently sized. And so I think hollowing it is usually okay. I don't hollow arms, and I usually don't hollow heads on their own in, unless they're really big. Um, and in the case, I need to make sure that there's enough room in the neck for drainage because the, usually what happens is, is the resin or um, during cleaning the alcohol will, will, will just get stuck. It'll pool up in those areas. So it becomes an issue. Now, for this, we're going to go ahead and use the support painter for a lot of this because personally, I love the support painter. It's a fast way to get your workflows done. If you have a steady hand and if you're careful with what you're doing, you can create pretty good perimeters and you can border out, you know, circles and you can create your perimeter frames with your supports and stuff like that. And it's actually a really neat way to work. Um, again, if, if you don't have a steady hand <laughs> and you, you're, you're not that great with freehanding stuff, um, you, I mean, you just take some practice, maybe you'll get a little better at it. If not, you know, there are other ways to do it. You can use inline supporting, which we've covered before, um, which I'll actually show you here. You can still use on limb, look, here, inline supporting, hold shift and click and boom, and easily add supports to the bottom of the leg. I mean, come on, how many clicks would that have been? Even support painting, I wouldn't have gotten that that clean. So honestly, it's, it's nice, it's organized, it's tight, it's bundled together and you have the supporting you need in um, and using inline supports. Um, the funny thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, those are only meant for, you know, you know, straight lines and square objects and flat surfaces. And nah, I, I use that for tons of things. Um, you know, the support painter, in fact, uh, you know, I don't think was probably intended for the way I use it, but I, you know, get a lot of use out of it this way because honestly, it's a quick way for me to freehand in the supporting I need and then if I need to make any adjustments I'll go in and make any adjustments um, for the most part it works great it's fast it's efficient um, and it puts the puts the supports in the places that they need to be and they don't crowd each other because of the way you can set the interval uh, and the spacing and it's smart enough to avoid every other support 
um, that is too close to it. So it, again, it's not going to crowd itself. It's not going to cause issues. You're not going to have um, an overcrowded item because you did too much support painting. The support painter is just, just going to stop painting supports in a particular area once it's like, nah, I, I can't put any more here. Um, so again, it's, it's a great system. It works well. Uh, and the inline system works well too, even on body parts. Uh, as long as you have a flat area to work with, as long as you have a, a, a surface to work on, um, you, you can use inline supports and uh, they will follow the track mostly. Um, now, if you're working on like a steep curve or something that has like a massive drop off, no, it's not going to work that well. But honestly, if you're supporting little tiny spots at a time, what do you really need to worry about inline supports for? The only reason I use that is when I'm trying to cover a decent amount of distance uh, and I'll just, I just want to drop a bunch of supports there. The reason the back of the leg was a good example of that was because it was a decent sized little calf area where you could drop those little supports. And I, I thought that was actually a good example of how that could work technically on a body part. Or sorry, not the calf, the thigh area. Um, so yeah, good example of how that could work on a body part. And um, you know, I think it works pretty well for the most part. So don't forget to fill in all the yellow areas here. Make sure you finish all that up. Uh, and support everything that you need to. Obviously, for any of the limbs, if you need to do any internal supporting, make sure that you check the islands there and do any internal supporting. Uh, in this particular one, I did just the minimal, doing the island supports, and kind of left most of it up to the walls themselves to support the print. And in most cases, I find that with limbs like legs and things like that, it usually isn't much of a big deal to leave out a lot of the internal supports. So we'll go ahead and do our last island check once we finish off these supports, and then we will run the uh, final slice, and uh, that'll be it for this one. All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching as usual. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. Don't forget to leave us your comments. Tell us what you thought of the episode. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Let us know. Hit that like button, and don't forget to ring the bell if you want notifications about more episodes that we release. Thanks so much, guys, and see you all soon.